My favorite, it's Judd's Hockey Show. Oh, just because the Wild hasn't played a game now in how long, Declan Goff? About a month or so? It's been a while? Oh, yeah, it's, you know, par for the course. Puns are intended. There <laughs> for, par uh, for the course. Time for a golf spot. Best. Anyway, uh, just because the Wild has not played a game in several weeks doesn't mean that Judd's Hockey Show doesn't go deep into the season. In fact, mm-hmm. we're in the conference finals now. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights are about to sweep the Dallas Stars, the Florida Panthers, Mm. Swept the Carolina Hurricanes, and we're going to talk about the Dallas Stars in a second. Uh, But I want to start with a conversation, Declan, that I was having. I actually threw this out on Twitter a couple of days ago, and here's why. So Marco Rossi, 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 Rossi. playing for, playing for, that's you. I got You and Rami can roll the tongues. I can't roll the tongue. That's very good. Playing for Austria in the World Hockey Championships, okay? He scored a highlight reel goal where he basically went through the entire Hungary team to score. It was, it was basically, it, it was gorgeous. And someone tweeted it out, or I should say a lot of people did. And one of my responses on the tweet was, you need to find out next year what this guy can do with the Wild. Some people agreed. I was also got a few tweets back saying Uh-oh. that... That hungry team is like an ECHL team. This doesn't mean anything. You can't. If he's ready, <laughs> he's ready. If he's not, he's not. Okay. And we've touched on this, but I, I don't think that we have led a show with this topic yet. Okay. Marco Rossi was the ninth pick in his draft, 2020. Mm-hmm. He's going to be 22 years of age on September 23rd. So basically right before the season starts, he's going to turn 22 which in hockey terms is not young. I mean, you've got, you've got at times 19 year old kids playing 20 year olds. Mm -hmm. And again, he's a top 10 pick. So he's not a third round pick. Oh, he's being rushed. Zolgad. What are you doing? What are you doing to him? He is the ninth overall pick. He plays a position at which the wild desperately needs help. Um, He just got done playing, as I said, in the world championships for, for Austria, where he factored in six of their 10 goals, one goal, five assists in seven games. He's coming off a season with the Iowa wild second year there in the American hockey league in which he had 16 goals, 51 points in 53 games, six on the power play. And he was a plus five. He of course started the season here. The expectation was, Oh my gosh, he might center a, a great line here. And then the wild said, We don't think that you play a tough enough style. We need to see you bounce back more, blah, blah, blah. He got sent down, returned briefly, but that was it. Could you provide any pushback to me on on the fact that at the age of 22, Mm -hmm. I believe that it is now time to find out at the very least in a full season what he has, because I don't think having him for a third year play in the American Hockey League, and we're not talking about a slappy. We're talking about a ninth overall pick. I don't see what good that does. I think the Wild 100% needs to find out what they, they have, and if they make a judgment again after 18 games, I throw up my hands and say, what are you doing? Uh, so I, let's let's answer this question also <clears throat> by looking at the 2020 NHL draft class too that uh, Rossi excuse me, was a part of. Um, because I think this is also important context of how fast are these players developing? Are anyone else in their class, you know, getting time to figure out if, if there can be NHL players. So I wanted to look at the 2020 NHL draft to kind of figure out, well, is is this class just bad or other players not playing, you know? So I took a look at it, Judd. So number one overall pick Alex Lafaniere, who has been a bust by the way, like honestly, legitimately Judd I don't think we talk enough about that has been that's he came in with a lot of hype remember you and I talked about I mean he was supposed to be really damn good with the Rangers he has been a bust Mm -hmm. an absolute bust Mm -hmm. um Quentin Byfield of the Kings looks like he could be a pretty solid piece for LA to build around he was the second overall pick he's played in 99 games by the way last year played in his played in 216 games so I'm just going to go down the games played list as, as until we get to Rossi Okay. Uh, with the Senators, is it is it Stutzel? Tim Stutzel? Tim Stutzel. The, German. Stutzel? Germany. Having a great start. He might be the best guy in this class, actually. 
Yep. Um, almost scored, I believe, 40 goals last year for the Sens. He looks like he's going to be a, a good building block for them. He's playing mm-hmm. 210 games. Uh, Lucas Raymond, another really solid piece, piece for the Detroit Red Wings. He's played in 156 games. Uh, Ottawa also was on the clock. Jake Sanderson, a defenseman. He put up he's put up solid numbers, but I couldn't tell you who the hell he is really because I don't watch Senators hockey enough. But still, to the point, he has played in 77 games in this class. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jamie Drysidel, who actually we have seen a little bit with the Ducks, he has played in 113 games. He's logged a lot of games for a bad Ducks team, but regardless, he's playing a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alexander Holtz with the Devils was the seventh pick. He's only logged 28 games. Jack Quinn with the Sabers, who went right before Rossi. Uh, has also played in 77 games and had a pretty nice uh, full season last year with Buffalo. And then we get to Marco R- Rossi. Mm-hmm. 21 games, no goals, one assist, one point. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, there are players underneath Rossi who have also logged a lot of games. Um, Anton Lundell with the Florida Panthers right now, who are, who are now in the Stanley Cup, 138 games. He has 77 points. So uh, Jarvis. Seth Jar- Seth yep. Jarvis, who they just saw also in the Eastern Conference Finals, 150 games. Yep. So I guess my, my my point is it's this is a pretty good draft class where a lot of players are already now starting to play a significant amount of games with the teams that drafted them. But you look at Marco Rossi, who has played in 21 games, the only one in that class among the first 15 picks, Judd, who, hasn't, who has logged less games than Marco Rossi is, I believe it's Yaroslav... Askarov from the Predators, who has played in one game. I'm not going to pretend how to pronounce that game. He's a goaltender, too. You probably too, came very close. You probably came incredibly close. He's a goaltender, too, so he's yep. he's fine. Everyone else was a forward or a defenseman. Everyone has logged at least 28, if not hundreds of games here. It's time to figure out what you have in the kid. It's my long huh. winded way of saying it's time to figure out what you have in Marco Rossi. The 2020 draft class has proved to be a, a, a draft class where other t- players have already stepped into their organizations and have been very good contributors for them. So... You got to figure it out here with 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 Bill and give him the op- Bill and Dean to give him the proper opportunity to play significant games just to figure out. Absolutely, and there's only so many times like okay, he has been sent down, and I totally get it last year, um, but there's only so many times that you could say go to Iowa and play well and prove yourself. And I know they're trying to hone his game, but he's the ninth overall pick, and at some point in time, I think you just got to play the guy and find out. What can he, he do? And by the way, it's not like you've got you've got a bunch of centers that are, you know, it's like, oh, the depth chart. <laughs> Look at the depth chart. Um, Eric Sinek, okay, legit. And he was a first-round pick who took some time, but he was a later first-round pick, right? Yep. He was not a top-ten pick. Yep. And so my whole thing is I know that Dean, and this is where the old-school hockey people come in. Well, uh, Dean's got to have guys who play, you know, Dean style. I mean, Freddie Goudreau is defensively responsible, and he is, and that's awesome. That's fantastic. But if you have a top-ten pick, it's time to find out. And if he's a bust, he's a bust. Like, if he's a bust, if he's never going to play – um, they, they, they want more grit. They want him to play a tougher game. They want him to get his nose dirty, which I appreciate. That's fine. But if he's never going to do that and you don't want him, then what's the point? Right. So like, I just, I think we are at a point now, this whole thing of, well, just send him down again. If he doesn't fit in, first of all, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. You haven't been past the first round of the playoffs since 2015. Okay. So you ain't exactly the 82 Islanders. Well, I couldn't get the guy in there because we're winning Stanley cups. Um, you need centers desperately. And the only way that this kid is going to get as tough as you want is if he gets punched in the face on a Tuesday night at the X and responds, you know, I'm sorry, but at some point, some 38 year old has been playing in the American hockey league for Milwaukee who pushes Rossi is not going to get the desired response of, well, did you see how he came back against that old man? You know, yeah. this, this is a young man's league. This is a speed league. Um, and, and, and as Bill Guerin once told me, you are so eighties and he's right. I loved that style. You are? Yeah. That was my, but the style's different now. It's great. And Marco Rossi can, is either going to come here and help you or he's a bust. Yep. Um, but, you know, if you keep putting him on the fourth line and demoting him and playing mind games with him, Dean, it doesn't work. This is part of what drives me crazy about Dean, that that old school crap 
it works to a certain point, but after that, you've got to give kids a chance. And you did a great job of going through a list of guys that are getting a chance. Mm -hmm. And if Rosie don't fit there, then he's going to be gone. But find out. It's like they're trying to tread water. Well, he's not ready yet. No, he's not ready yet. At some point in time, good old Judd's going to come along and say, you know what? He's never going to be that. Yeah. Yeah, they have to give him the shot to be ready. Everyone in that draft class has essentially played significant. Everyone in the first round of of the top 15 picks have all played uh, significant games and minutes. And it's time to see. And look, you're you're stuck in salary cap hell. You can't make a lot of additions this year in free agency. Yes. Um, so the, really, the time is now. And And by the way, I don't think you are insinuating that Marco Rossi is a superstar. And because he hasn't played, we haven't seen the superstar level. He very well might be a bust, right? Yes. Like that yes. is that's, that's part saying. of this conversation. But he needs to. <laughs> we need to see if he is indeed a bust. We need to see if he's yes. a superstar. We need to see if he's a bust. Which one is it? He plays a position at which the Wild desperately needs skill players. Correct. Ryan Hartman. If you are literally going to go into next September, saying or October, we got to play Ryan Hartman again. We got to we got to sell out for regular season success. Then what are we doing here? Right. This is the time. Look, you're in cap hell. This is the time to find out. And it, and look, Declan, if I tell you right now, you know what? They're going to run her back. Goudreau's playing and Hartman's playing, and they're going to gr grit and grime their way. They're going to finish third place in the Central, and then they're going to lose in the first round again. Or they're going to play their kids. They're going to find out, and they might miss the playoffs. But they can decide on kids then. Right now, I'll take that. Absolutely. Wouldn't you? Yeah. No. And that's that's what I want to see at this point. Um, unless Bill gets absolutely really wild here this summer, and he guts players that we aren't even seeing coming, it's going to be um, it's going it's, it's going to be pretty much the same roster that's going to be coming back to the Wild next season. And that's what I want the young kids to play. And I don't want them on the fourth line. I don't want them playing specific. I don't care how you do. And Florida now is an example of this. I don't care how you do in the regular season. You know, maybe you make the playoffs. Maybe you don't. But it just absolutely drives me crazy. You know what? I am all worked up. And I'm trying to think think of myself, how can I get sports therapy? How can I get how can I get to a place where sports dad is calm, cool, and collected? And I'm gonna tell you right now, Power Lodge and Miller Marine are friends. It's a marriage of what we call, I mean, look at that throttle therapy mm. between fun on the land and fun on the water. You talk about taking the stress off. Pick up, pick your power and head to the lodge. Power Lodge, their locations are in Brainerd, Onamia, Ramsey, and Miller Marine in St. Cloud. Now through Memorial Day, which of course is is c coming up, or I should say Memorial Saturday, which is I'll be on the this boat. Saturday. Uh, okay, you can find the boat or pontoon that's just right for you and your next remember when family moment. It's going to be a great fun. Their locations are open through Saturday, close Sunday, and Memorial Day as well. So come in by Saturday to pick up your pontoon, hook it up, and drive it home uh, for an on the water before the holiday weekend is over again miller marine and power lodge head to powerlodge.com or millermarine.com then just get used to saving bids big because it all starts at the lodge the power lodge i feel so much better yeah i'm excited for some uh some little throughout and look at the wilder enjoying themselves on boats right people, judd i mean i mean come on. People love. you're telling you're you're telling me that marcus Felino and company aren't enjoying themselves a nice miller marine power boat right now from of course the power they lodge. are come on of course they are. The Bennington is the place to start. You know what? There's a guy right now who still has his skates on, but I got a feeling he's going to be, I think he's <laughs> might. I think he might be on his Bennington very soon too. Ryan Suter of the Dallas stars. Some might call him an old friend. I call him an old pain in the ass. Can you play the clip of him yeah. after game two against the golden Knights? Just the sequence at the end there, just, you know, what happened there on the turnover and then after the turnover as well? Um, on your point, at the end of regulation, Vegas is second. Did you watch it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then you can, you know what happened. Uh, is there something, what would you have wanted to do differently in that situation? Well, I just, uh, that's for us to, to talk about. Um, yeah, obviously it wasn't the right play. Uh, and it ended up costing us. Thank you so much, Bill Guerin, for <laughs> buying out that complete bozo. So if you didn't see it, Dallas lost 
game one of the Western Conference Finals to the Golden Knights in OT. This series has actually been, until game four, very close, okay? Or game three, very close. In game two, the Stars hold a late two-to-one lead. Ryan Suter, behind his own net, literally handles the puck like it is a September preseason game. Not a care in the world. Turns it over. It, of course, gets on to the stick of Jack Eichel, who is now with the Golden Knights, who makes a marvelous pass. And Jonathan Marchessault scores the goal to make it 2-2. Dallas then falls in OT. And Ryan Suter, until then, has been... There's a lot of people in Dallas who, during the regular season, wanted him gone. He's actually in the playoffs until then. I think he'd been okay. But that stunt right there, after he makes a play that is literally, I mean, it wasn't like a hurry, panic, dumb play. It was an, I don't care play. How you get to that point late in the third period of a conference final. I have no idea. But then when asked about it, and I got a story off this, when asked about it by the media, an incredibly fair question. It is an incredibly fair question to say, did you see it? And then to ask, what would you have liked to do after he was lazy as hell? And for you to say, we'll talk about that internally. Now, if Ryan Suter had been yelled at on the bench and been like, hey, what did uh, DeBoer say, right? Then it's like, yeah, we're going to talk about that. We're going to try and keep that internal. But to not take any responsibility of like, yeah, you know, I that was a terrible play. You know, to not give a real quote, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, that there were guys in that room and that there were guys who played with him who said, that's the Ryan I know. Yeah. The lack of accountability and response responsibility for that play. And that gets me to the story 2015, if I'm not mistaken. No, it was 16. The year that the wild played Dallas in the first round for the first time, I think it was 16. Okay. Yep. That was 16. And, and that team was going to miss the playoffs. Mike Yo got fired, I think on Valentine's day. Um, John Torchetti Torch. comes in and Torch comes in and actually does a great job. They make the playoffs. They play Dallas. I think it was game three or four here. Ryan Suter again, made a stupid play. And because the coaching staff, and I think Dallas might have the same problem because the coaching staff is so afraid to rip him because he's such a pain in the ass. Torch said something about, we didn't make a play in our own zone. And he was talking about Suter, but he didn't name him. Yeah. Ryan Suter post game, I guess, privately goes crazy. Yep. You know, how could you point, how could you single that out? How could you do to the point of, I have heard stories that on his way out the door, Torch basically screamed at suits. You are unbelievably coachable. Yeah. This is why you bought out that yeah. absolute. I don't even want to begin to use adjectives, but my God, what a piece of work that guy is. Yeah. I've, I've heard similar things too. I've heard, um, <clears throat> Even went was did he go back to Detroit as an assistant or was Chicago? Yes. No, it's Detroit. I think. I think Detroit, you're right. Right. And I've heard similar things that uh, he said he has been on the record that, hey, I I actually loved everyone there in Minnesota. I loved my time. Of course, I wanted you know to get the full time job, and I wish everyone the best except for number twenty. That guy. Oh, I mean, you he, heard that? I've heard very similar <laughs> things about that. He loved everyone. He had no problems with the wild and, and he understood why they let him go to a degree and it was bummed out that he didn't get the job, but he said very similar after, except for 20, I don't really care about number 20. Uh, so I, I'm not shocked to, to see these comments like he does with the stars and same thing. Um, his reputation is coming weirder and weirder, you know, quietly. He is a very, I believe, I don't know if this was, if this was Wyshynski or if this was on the athletic, but Quietly, he is known as one of the dirtiest players in the game. Dirty and dirty, not like because oh, the Caprice Yes, the, the Caprice he is, cross checks. He is known. He, he does it quietly. He does it not in ways that are you know Bertuzzi esque noticeable, oh, right. but he right. does these things that are quietly well, very yeah. dangerous and very honestly head scratching. And yeah, he's. I'm. I'm glad he's gone too. I and mean, look, these buyouts stink, and it makes honestly creating content because you can't really. Uh, figure out who the hell they're going to do and sign or what they're going to do in free agency. But it's worth it that both these guys are not on the roster anymore, especially him. Yeah. In my opinion, Parisi, Parisi was definitely had become what I, I would consider Declan to be a locker room lawyer of sorts. 
So yes. I'm not uh, I'm not absolving and I've heard him. Similar things uh, with the Islanders organization too, by the way. Oh really? Uh huh. Oh, do share. I've I've heard similar things. I've I've heard. I know nothing about this. Great guy to be around. Yeah. If you, <laughs> I just heard this yesterday. Great guy to be around. If if you also have the same beliefs and thought process as him. Can I say that? Okay. Interesting. If you have different type of ways you want to go about things that aren't in his line of thinking, he doesn't respect you or like you a whole lot. I, I buy that. But if, but if you're in it, which like, look, that's honestly a lot of people. If you're in his camp and, and you kind of, you know, sing the same tunes, you're buddies. He's a good guy to be around. But if you're not, it's it can be bad. It can not be a good time. Mm -hmm. So I think Billy wanted Zach out of the room, but I also think that he could have he could easily justify that because Zach's play was – declining now he did come back this past well season year. with a nice year but his play was definitely declining he had been hurt a ton right so like there was a case to be made that that bio just m made sense based on production and i get that one Suter took everyone but by a surprise because the production hadn't at that point in time dropped off as much but this is how big a pain in the ass this guy was and again to take no responsibility to like sort of snap back well you saw it and then to be asked, okay, then tell us what you would do differently, which is an easy one. I should have done this. I should have done that. We'll talk about that internally. Um, talk about a lack of accountability. This, I am so glad that that guy is gone. And you know what? I don't often say this. He's a he's a guy I'm glad to see fail. I'm glad he's not going to make the finals. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't deserve it. He doesn't deserve a he. He's a guy that his self worth is so high when his real worth is. You know, you're still good, but you ain't great. So, all right, before we go, I do want to give a shout out to something that is great. And that is the product uh, that our friends from Livia Weight Control Centers provide. They provide you with the gift of weight loss. Look at the guy on the left. Look at the guy on the right. You say, how did that happen? I'm going to tell you right now. It is spelled L-I-V-E-A Weight Control Centers. And uh, right now, if you join, two things. First of all, by the 4th of July, you're going to be down about 15 pounds. So imagine that by the 4th of July right. and, and, you know, the hardest summer, you're feeling great. You're looking great. All of your clothes, all those clothes that right now might not fit, they're going to start to fit. And here's the best part about it. If you contact them today, and we do have an offer coming up for you tomorrow. So you are going to want uh -huh. to stay tuned to, uh, to Purple Daily, to Judd's Hockey Show, to... Minnesota Sports with Mackie and Judd. But if you contact them today, you're going to receive three months for free. That's right, three months for free. Call them, 855-GO-LIVIA. Contact them online, L-I-V-E-A, Livia.com. That, my friends, is your ticket to a healthy and happy summer, not to mention sustained weight loss, Livia.com. Hit that subscribe button, daily uh, Minnesota Sports Entertainment. Some reckless and honestly, a little bit of dissension in our Shohei Otani conversation on trade rumors between uh, the oh, three members of, of this show. It, it was fun. I feel like I officiated it more. You did. You officiated well. Like you I and played... Phil were at each other's, but Phil was trying to like say he was all in. And then you're like, no, 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 no I'm yeah. re I'm really all in and just go, go watch it go watch and decide. It. But it does, it did get contentious. Yeah. 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 You, we're, we're here for all uh, twins fans, whether you want to complain or not, it doesn't matter. We're not going to not let you do that. All right. So hit that subscribe button and pass shoot score.